Are you ready to take the most popular motion graphic style of the year and make it even trendier? Well, this is how to easily transform any of your graphics into that beautiful Apple liquid glass effect right here in After Effects. All right, so there's two slightly different uses for this effect. The first approach will look great on top of images or video, and the second method will look great on those bright white backgrounds. So you can start with any white shape of your choice, or you can convert your logo into a shape layer. But then immediately when you're ready, apply the fast box blur effect and set the radius to five. Now you can duplicate your graphic and turn off the fill and set the stroke to around 50. However, if you're doing this with say a complex logo, instead keep the fill turned on and set the stroke to just two. And lastly, set the blur to 20 and turn off your layer like we did nothing. And to further the nothingness, set your main graphic layer to an adjustment layer by clicking this icon here. So now we just have a blurred cutout of our shape. And for the ultimate knockout punch, drop in the displacement map effect and set the layer to that duplicated layer that we just created and set this to effects and mask. Now with the power of displacement, increase these values until you get this warp distortion look. And you can take this even further by throwing in say the transform effect and adjusting the anchor point, position, and scale to slightly offset the background to get more punch around the edges and not on your shirt. <laughs> Um, but overall, you cook it away with this very simple liquid glass effect and call it a day if you're using a basic shape. And if you add some graphics on top of your liquid glass, nobody will notice how easy this was and call you a genius. Though the logo is still coming together, so trust me on this. Now, for the exciting part, if you want to add a drop of gradient to your liquid, draw out a rectangle of the shape tool like so and set it to a linear gradient. This allows you to edit the gradient while adding in multiple color stops to build out any style that you like. But when you're done, don't forget to stretch out the start and end points to maximize your gradient size. Perfect. So go ahead and duplicate your logo or graphic and turn off the adjustment layer option and of course delete the effects. From here, set the track mat of your gradient to that duplicated layer, which we'll call Matt, not Damon. Um, feel free to move the gradient however you like, and I would throw in, say, the wiggle pass property inside your shape layer, and then increase the size and set the points to smooth. And to make your gradient stand out even more, I would try using the glow effect and duplicate it twice. The only important note is just to increase the glow radius on the second glow. And lastly, try using the fast box blur effect with a high blur radius to distribute this around your glass. And this should make everything look really, really cool. And we're just a few more steps away to making our logo and shape absolutely amazing. And of course, produce amazing work with my free Premiere Pro and After Effects templates, drag and drop seamless transitions and cinematic motion graphics that you can customize to fit your vision and moments. You can access thousands of templates and presets directly with the Motion Duck extension and produce masterpieces for yourself and your clients in no time with these countless assets linked below. And if you do pick up anything, you will be supporting my channel. So thank you very much. All right, the most important aspect of any glass effect are the edges around the glass. You know, it's what sells the effect and gets the people going. <laughs> So start off by duplicating the main layer with all those effects and then turn off the fill and set the stroke to anywhere from 2 to 10. You know, if you have a complex logo, I would set the stroke closer to 10. Then the only notable action is to set your blur radius to 30. You know, it's subtle, but it helps define the edge. And to further the defined edge, duplicate this layer again, delete the effects and turn off the adjustment layer option and make sure the stroke is set to 10 this time. On this layer, throw in the fast box blur once again and use a radius of four. And lastly, use the set matte effect and set this to your main graphic or shape layer. And real quick, do another duplicate of this entire layer and set the blur to 40. For that previous light edge layer, I would just lower the opacity to around 50% or so to make the effect a little more subtle. Now to add more pop to the sides, let's go ahead and duplicate the top layer again, delete the effects and use a fill with no stroke. Now when you're ready, right click, go to layer styles and add bevel and emboss like emboss. But first, Set the advanced blending fill opacity to 0% and this way the bevel will only be applied to the edges. And lastly, set the style to outer bevel, set both highlight and shadow opacities to 100% and use a white shadow color. 
And to animate this light, keyframe the angle, and this will animate the light around your design. Now for my favorite as an optional extra touch, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer again, delete the layer style, and use the CC light sweep effect. Be sure to set this to cut out, and then you can use say a smooth style, adjust the settings as you see fit, and then animate this to slide across your glass like it's nobody's business. And pro tip, most importantly, don't forget to parent everything except for that gradient to your main graphic. This way you can animate the scale of your graphic with no problem and everything will just update. Absolutely great. But what if you want this on a white background? Well, no problem. Hmm. Well, kind of. <laughs> so to make this actually look great on a white or just a bright background, you got to go with the shadow. So duplicate that last light sweep layer, delete the effect, and then set the fill color to black. And instead of using a drop shadow effect, try using the CC radial fast blur effect and set the amount to 95 while moving that anchor point to the top corner. Then of course, set the track mat of your shadow to that matte layer that we use for the gradient. Be sure to invert the mask and then lower the opacity. We also need to set that top light edge fill effect that has that box blur of 40 to a black stroke. And finally, try duplicating that light sweep layer, you know, kind of readjust the effect as you need because we solely want this light sitting on one side of the shape without it animating. And then when you're ready and happy with that, duplicate this and position the new sweep to the other side so we can add that extra brightness to the edges. And also if you like, you can add say the tint effect to your main graphic and give it a like a 10% blue look to help blend this with the background a little bit better but overall this is how to apply a glass effect to anything here in after effects subscribe to be the best and always be creative